Hello and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today we're going to be talking about a certain type of brain tumor. But first, if you like this video, please click the like button at the base of the screen. In addition, this video is meant for e medical education purposes only and is not intended to be used for medical advice. If you or a loved one have a brain tumor, please talk to your doctor. All right, let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at this brain tumor. Um, but first I wanted to give a shout out uh, to the University of Michigan. They have a virtual slide box that's great and uh, that's where I'm going to be talking, that's what I'm going to be talking about today is one of their slides. So check them out if you get a chance. All right. So, uh, so this patient had a tumor in the brain or spinal cord. A neurosurgeon went in, took it out, gave it to me, the pathologist, to make a diagnosis. So what I look for in general is I like to get a, a, a broad overview of what uh, the, the lesion looks like. And in just uh, searching around here, it looks to be pretty homogeneous. There's a little bit of cautery artifact here, um, which tells us that it was bleeding a little bit and that the surgeon had to cauterize it to stop the bleeding. So when we look at a, 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 this tumor a little bit on a little bit higher power, we can see that for the most part, it's pretty homogeneous. Uh, there are some fascicles here. There's a few blood vessels around. Um, and But in searching around, we can see that there are these characteristic abnormal findings here, which are located here and here and here and here and here, here, here. Basically, they're everywhere. Um, and so when we look around, we can see that some of them are a little bit round and some of them are a little bit rod shaped. Um, and when we take a closer look, here are red blood cells, which are inside the blood vessel. Okay, so this is the blood vessel here are endothelial cells. And these red cells in the center, these are your red blood cells. You see how these are like a, a pink red appearance, whereas these abnormal structures here, these are more of like a, a purple red appearance. Um, again, here's another blood vessel and here's some more of these rod like structures here and here. So these are Rosenthal fibers here. Okay. All of these are Rosenthal fibers, Rosenthal fibers, Rosenthal fibers. Um, sometimes they can look a little bit round, but again, these are all Rosenthal fibers and Rosenthal fibers are very characteristically found in this tumor, which is, um, fascicular. It's more homogeneous. It's astrocytic. And this is a very typical appearance of a pilocytic astrocytoma. Now, pilocytic astrocytomas, they, they can have a variety of appearances. Sometimes they can be more microcystic. Sometimes they can be more fascicular. Sometimes they can be densely compacted. Sometimes they have these alterating um, uh, regions of uh, dense fibrillarity alternating with uh, more loosely arranged microcystic areas. Uh, they can have a variety of appearances, but one of the very common abnormal findings that you see in pilocytic astrocytomas are Rosenthal fibers. So whenever you see a Rosenthal fiber, which are these kind of purple pink structures, um, this should make you think of pilocytic astrocytoma. Now they're not specific for pilocytic astrocytoma. You can find Rosenthal fibers in a variety of other lesions, particularly if you have a slow growing tumor that is growing next to non-neoplastic brain. You can get Rosenthal fibers in the non-neoplastic brain um, sur immediately surrounding a slow-growing tumor. So a slow-growing tumor would be something like a craniopharyngioma, a hemangioblastoma, um, maybe a meningioma, something that's very slow-growing and it's pushing up against the brain and so the brain can have a reactive um, appearance. Um, and it can develop Rosenthal fibers as a, as a reactive um, um, process. 
And so this is important to recognize because pilocytic astrocytomas and craniopharyngiomas with this Rosenthal fiber reactive process developing in the surrounding non-neoplastic brain can both happen in the same areas, particularly in the supracellar region. So this is something to um, make sure that you um, consider whenever you're looking at um, biopsies from the supracellar region. Um, Rosenthal fibers, again, here and here and here, can also be seen in um, certain genetic disorders, particularly um, Alexander's disease, uh, in which it, it would be much more um, profound and uh, m much more numerous. But again, these are Rosenthal fibers, a very characteristic finding in pilocytic astrocytomas, although not specific for pilocytic astrocytomas. And keep in mind that pilocytic astrocytomas can have a variety of appearances, um, ranging from more loosely arranged areas to more compact fibrillar areas. But typically, um, if you see Rosenthal fibers, pilocytic astrocytoma really does need to be high up in your differential. All right, that completes today's session for Adventures in Neuropathology. Please join us next time. Thank you.